Hi there. My name is Lisekho Mataba and welcome to the RAF podcast. A first of its kind for the fund where we aim to educate you, the viewer, about all things RAF. On today's episode, we'll be talking to the newly appointed Head of Communications at the Fund, Mr. McIntosh Polela. McIntosh has a wealth of experience in the media industry, having started his career as a radio and TV journalist before embarking on an impressive journey in the field of communications. McIntosh is also an award-winning author. Whew, that was a mouthful. Welcome, Macintosh. Thank you, and thank you for <laughs> inviting me. I'm happy to be here. I still feel like I didn't fit all those accolades into one, but welcome nonetheless. No, you could have, you could have said less, but yeah, that was good. No, that's awesome. So what inspired the launch of this podcast, and uh, what do you hope to achieve from it? Look, we are always doing more to make sure that we try and interact with our claimants so that we empower them to know their rights, number one, but number two, to make it easy for them to get in touch with us, to be able to claim. For instance, in um, October 2023, we launched our you know, contact center to be able to interact with them better, to be able to call them back when we need to call them back. And so a podcast is another layer to be able to make things easy for our claimants, to be able to interact with them, to be able to empower them with information to know the true story of who we are as the fund. I think that's brilliant because there's so many stories about the fund out there and people drawing their own conclusions on what the actual purpose of the road accident fund is. So I think a platform like this one gives you the opportunity to tell the actual story of the road accident fund and what it's actually meant to do for people's lives. You're perfectly right. You know, when people see me wearing this jacket, um, I had a guy who was asking me, can you give me a little bit of, uh, you know, money? I'm like, huh? I was like, yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to break my leg and I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to claim. And I'm like, that's not who we are. We're not a lottery. It's not we a are lot. a social <laughs> benefit. And so it's important for us to take the narrative, mm. to tell people who we are, but more importantly, how you interact with us in the unfortunate event you encounter a car accident. Yeah, that's brilliant. I think uh, this platform will give the Road Accident Fund that exact opportunity to show that it is more than just a financial compensation that accident victims are getting. There's so many products and services that um, the Road Accident Fund offers from what I've researched. And so I'm looking forward to better understanding what those are and hopefully reaching those people that you aim to reach with this information. Look, our claimants are important to us. Once a person encounters an accident, you mm -hmm. can imagine that this person is confused and they are being surrounded by people who say, I'm going to help you because they want to get a buck out of them. And so it's important for us that we provide them with as much information as possible. Number one, to assist, to calm them down, to say we're here mm -hmm. to, to assist with the social benefit. But number two, it's important for us to educate them again that this is not a lottery. It's a yes. social benefit that is meant to nurse you back into health, mm. but more importantly, to reintegrate you into society. Let's take a step back. Um, I want to understand where this organization comes from, where it started. So just um, give me a brief history of the fund. So the story of RAF effectively starts in the mid-1940s, where yep. it was necessary to respond to road accidents. And as you know, in the 1940s, it was, there were fewer cars, but it, there was a, rec a recognition already that uh, you know, with road accidents, you mm. needed to compensate people that um, have accidents on the road. From the 1945s onwards, going up to the 80s, I mean, the RAF has uh, existed in, in different shapes and forms. But where it really starts is with our, you know, current democracy, where in 1996, we mm -hmm. tried to reassemble and rethink, thing, rethink things and we put them together to sort of better respond to our new democracy. Mm -hmm. And as we stand now, we're still working. Mm -hmm. uh, we're still working to improve the RAF. We're still working to reshape it, to respond mm -hmm. better. As it stands now, we're going to talk about the RAF bow of uh, 2023, it's just a part of us trying to improve the RAF and mm. trying to reshape it in the way that it responds 
better yes. to, to our claimants. In 2023, um, it was declared that uh, it is the year of the claimant. And as you've been saying, that your your goal is to really prioritize claimants' needs. And one of those things that the RAF is doing is educating them about their rights, you know, as claimants, what they have a right to. And also, as you said, uh, rehabilitation more than just compensation. So with that in mind, um, let's talk about the RAF. Um, what is the Road Accident Fund and what is the mandate of the Road Accident Fund? So the Road Ex Accident Fund is an agency of the Department of Transport. Our focus is mainly to assist claimants after that unfortunate accident to be able to claim. But number two, there is a layer that is often neglected, which is road safety. Uh, since my coming to the RAF, I have pushed road safety forward as a very important cog in our mandate. Because mm. essentially, what we need to do is to reduce the number of people that claim, to reduce the number of people that maim themselves, that kill themselves on the road, to reduce the number of people that are irresponsible on, on the road that lead to the maiming and the killing of people unnecessarily. But number two, there's a, a social and an economic role within the RAF. Our economic role recognizes that transportation is a very important mode to the contribution mm. of our economy and that the private sector does not do enough to be able to compensate mm. people after the uh, road accident. And so we take that and we've become a social benefit. Mm. Number two, on the social role, we recognize that after an accident, we have to reintegrate people into society. Effectively, we're nursing you back into health. Again, it's not a lottery that you need to go about and blow, because after blowing it, you then queue with the people with disability and old age, with SASA. Mm. And that is very, very unfair to the taxpayer. Mm. So with the monies that we give as compensation, you need to take it as a social benefit mm. to take you forward as an individual after an unfortunate road accident. Wow. Um, so many things to reflect on with what you said there. And I want to talk about road safety first, because the first thing you said is that we want to avoid accidents. You know, no one, we don't want people to suffer the effects of a road accident. So my thinking is, where are we getting it wrong as a society? Year in, year out, we see the stats. They're still high. And, you know, during months like the festive season, during the Easter months, where people know that they are traveling long distances, you know, what is it that maybe we, you know, society is not getting in terms of prioritizing road safety? So what I think it is, is, is that as a society, what we do is we get excited about the festive season when it comes to Christmas. And then you have an avalanche of messages about, road safety, driver behavior. Mm. And then comes Easter, we do it all again. Mm -hmm. We get excited about Easter and we say, oh goodness, by the way, you need to behave mm. on the road. And so I think what we are trying to do as the RAF mm. is to disseminate these messages throughout the year yeah. to remind you that by the way, throughout the year, there is a possibility that you can get involved in a road accident mm. and that you might die from that road accident. So what we're doing is we started with the festive season to excite people about driver behavior, mm. about how to behave on the road and how to not be, you know, a don't be dumb on the road. Okay. Don't be an idiot on the road that doesn't follow the, the rules of the road because not only are you gonna hurt yourself, you're gonna hurt other innocent people, people as well. So mm. effectively what we're doing is to get people excited about road safety throughout the year. And mm. we've got a range of things that we're going to do. Mm. We've got a range of partners that we've introduced and mm. we've got a range of things that people should be excited about. Mm. And we're gonna talk about that as a we go along. Later on. I'm very excited to, to talk about that because in the short time that you've been here, I've, we've seen you, you know, at places where uh, the youth is and where that education is actually important. And you guys are saying, hey, you're having fun, but remember, 
that you need to get home safely. Tell me more about the Road Accident Fund's strategic objectives. So look, we have a range of um, objectives that we're pursuing. Number one, we have been working through our strategic focus 2020 to 2025 on a number of things. Effectively, what we're trying to do is to improve the way we work and improve our services towards our claimants. So one of the things that we're trying to do is to make sure that we settle our claims within 120 days. And effectively, what that does is it reduces legal costs to the RAF. And that's our second point, is we aim to reduce legal costs because what has happened in the past is that there's been so much legal costs running into the billions that it has threatened the continuing life of the RAF. We've succeeded in a way in that, but we still have a long way to go. And another thing is we need to sort of change our organizational structure so that it responds better to our customers who are our, our claimants. Mm -hmm. So essentially, we need to improve our systems in a number of ways. Mm -hmm. But the most important way that we can improve it is obviously to change our integrated systems so that they are automated and that they respond better. We've already started mm -hmm. that with the, con with the contact center. Mm -hmm. And so we are continuing in that. And so that by year five, we can say, yay, we have achieved our objectives, but more important, importantly, so that our claimants can say, mm. we now understand who, who the RAF is, but we are able to claim much quicker. We are mm. able to sort of be in contact better with the RAF mm. compared to where we started, for instance, in year one of, of, of the five years. Yes, and it's 2024, so it's almost crunch time. Um, how's it looking? Uh, you've implemented all these things that you just mentioned now. Are we... You know, where are we, 50%, 90%? Look, we, we, we're looking good compared to where we were on year one. We've, we've done a lot of, of work. And part of why the people of South Africa don't know is that maybe we haven't marketed ourselves better, and that's why we're here. Mm -hmm. We want to tell you better what we've done for you yeah. so that you can better interact with, you know, the, the kind of systems that we, we, we have introduced. We're looking good. Are we going to get there? The jury is still out on that one, but we're working flat out to make sure that uh, we get there by year five. Awesome. The progress is, is there. You know, it is visible. You can see just, you know, from a, a third point of view that things are changing. You know, RAFI uh, Safani, that's what they say. People don't necessarily know what they can claim for. So I want to understand what can people claim for? Is it just, uh, you know, you get into an accident and you break your arm and you get like, you know, some cash? What, or are there any other services that the fund offers? So, so if you break your arm or if you, if you hurt yourself in whatever way, there is, it's, it's not an accident that we, we say, you know, we pay for your arm or we pay for this. No, no, no. There's a, there's a range of, uh, of, of, of expenses that we paid for. We pay for medical expenses. We, 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 pay for your, we pay for your injury. We pay for your loss of earnings. And in the unfortunate event where there is somebody who passes away, we pay for the expenses, expenses of the, the funeral or the cremation. And we go further. We also obviously recognize that in the event that somebody dies, if that person is a breadwinner, there are people that depended on that person. Mm, mm. And so those people can claim from the RAF. If, they, if those people are under the age of 18, obviously a, a, a guardian will, 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 will claim okay. on, on their behalf. How does the claims process work and who is eligible to claim from the Road Accident Fund? The person that is eligible to claim from the Road Accident Fund is a person that has had a bodily injury as a result of a road accident. Now, let me quickly point out that we do not compensate a driver who has been found to be liable mm. for the accident. So those are the people that, um, you know, that can claim. How you go about claiming, it's important that you know about the RAF1 claims form. Mm -hmm. From the minute that that happens, your doctor and, your, and, and, and the policeman becomes your friend mm. in that a doctor will then fill out the forms um, to prove, number one, that mm. you sustained injuries as a result of this accident, but number two, 
that you are out of work as a result of, uh, of, of this accident. The policeman becomes your friend in that, remember, that with ex every accident that happens on mm. the South African road, it has to be reported. And so you go to the police station and there's a, a confirmation that, uh, that uh, you know, there's, a, there's been an accident which has affected you. And effectively, then that helps you to come and say to us, I was involved in an accident. I was with a doctor, a clinic or a hospital. I'm here to claim. And that's when we start our process of assisting you with the claim. How often do you have to submit that claim? So, so, mm -hmm. so with the claims, what happens is, is, is for us, with a, an accident, mm. you have a period of three years mm. to claim. And that claim has to be finalized within a period of five years. Where it's a, a hit and run, you have two years to claim. But again, that claim has to be finalized within a period of five years. So meaning if three years from when the accident happens, I have not submitted anything to the RAF, I can't claim anymore. I can't say, hey, guys, I was in a coma for five years and I just woke up. Can I lodge my claim? It's very important that, that you know that we have that cutoff period of three years mm. because we've seen some people writing us emails and say, oh, by the way, I wasn't aware that, uh, you know, there could be monies that mm. be sitting within the RAF that would assist my kids after my husband died. Mm. Look, you have three years. And, and, and after three years, it's, it's, it's very difficult for us to help you. We, we, we can't assist you. Hence, it's important that we have pl platforms like these to tell you if Submitted. you have been hurt in an accident, you have three years, we'll finalize it within five years. If there has been a hit and run, you have two years, we finalize it within five years. But again, do not fall off your roof while fixing a house and then get ideas mm. that you will say, oh my goodness, it's a hit and run and then I can go and claim with the RAF because we have lots of those problems. So, so I get into an accident, I break my arm, I don't do anything about it. And then I fall off the roof one day and I'm like, hey, let me, is that, is that, is that what people are doing? Like, let me claim because now my spine is... It know? happens. Well, and, and it happens all, all the time. We've got fraudulent claims galore, basically. Oh, uh, wow. it's, it's an unfortunate part of... South Africa and their people are not always, you know, honest about mm. what has happened to them, you know. And and I must emphasize this because if you bring in a, a fraudulent claim, mm. our staff now get involved in trying to process your claim when they should be focusing on people who have been legit, legitimately mm. hurt by accident. Mm, the real and it victims. And close up the system. So once a claimant successfully lodges their claim and receives compensation from the fund, what happens? Do you send them home and say, enjoy your life, uh, it's been great? Or is there something else that you are doing towards the rehabilitation of the claimant? So we have what you call an undertaking certificate. What it is, is it's a contract between the RAF and the survivor of the road accident wherein we pay for your medical claims in line with uh, legislation. And that is processed by our teams um, in our regional offices. So we don't just say, you've had an accident, we've paid your claim, mm -hmm. and that's the end. I can give you an example of a, you know, a lady who had a, an accident in 1996. Mm -hmm. So effectively what we do is, if you're in a wheelchair, for mm -hmm. instance, we go and we remodel your home and to... Oh. Make sure that uh, you know you have easy access to your home. We provide mm. you wheelchairs, and so many years later, you know, in December 2023, on the Day of Remembrance that was presided upon by the Minister of Transport, Cindy mm. Chikunga, we gave a uh, wheelchair to this lady, um, mm. as well as as well as other people. And that's so many years later, since 1996. So wow. your journey with the RAF doesn't stop, doesn't stop with us mm. paying the compensation mm. with you. So we nurse you back to health, but we also hold your hand and continue on on your journey mm. as a partner to make sure that you continue uh, you know, on your journey of rehabilitation. Oh, that's very interesting. So you are just making sure that you're restoring you know, the quality of life and the dignity of, of the claimant. You are not just saying, uh, here's something for, sorry, you've been in an accident, here's something for the pain. But you're saying that we want to help you 
get your life back. Correct, correct. So it, it's, it's important for us uh, because remember what I told you is that we're trying to reintegrate you into society. Yeah. That reintegration into society mm. for a person who is in a wheelchair mm. is continuous. And in some instant, in, instances, mm. it's permanent. Yeah. And that's why we hold your hand and we walk with you on this journey, however long it takes. Can you tell me more about the RAF bill? The RAF has ex existed since the 1940s yes. in different shapes and forms. Yes. And that into our democracy, we obviously had to reshape it in 1996. Mm. And then in 2005, we had another amendment. What we've recognized in 2003 is that we need to reshape and improve the RAF again. Mm. So the RAF Amendment Bill of 2003 has different elements into it. Mm. Number one, we recognize that if we keep paying people lump sums, the RAF is going to go bankrupt. Mm. We need to pay people in installment. Mm. There's another element into that. Another element is you've seen a very popular show called I Blew It. Yes. Where we yeah. pay people <laughs> Who doesn't know I three it? million rand and the person blows it within eight months. And we and absolutely insane. detest that mm. because the person then goes back to Sasa to then say, please, can I mm. have money again? And that's very unfair, as mm. I said earlier, to, to, mm. to, to the taxpayers. It's also unfair to other beneficiaries. Yes. And we don't like that. We've recognized, again, that the inclusion of paying foreign nationals to buy the RAF was an accident. It was an accident in that the, RAF, the, the um, apartheid government mm. was the skunk of the world and nobody wanted to come to South Africa. So as a sweetener, what the government at the time did mm. was to say, we can introduce a system where we pay our local people, the people of South Africa, but mm -hmm. hey, we also pay you if you happen to get involved yes, in an accident. So they mm. did a lot of tricks mm. to make sure that they attract uh, you know, people to come into South Africa. Mm. Now we're saying, hey, this is very unfair. Yeah. I mean, in the past two or three years, we, we've paid billions and billions of rand that should be helping the people of South Africa yeah. to foreign nationals. Now, when McIntosh Lusiho goes to the US, USA goes mm. to Zimbabwe, goes to Mozambique, or any country in the get, world. They don't receive that. You have mm. to pay in for insurance so that mm. you take care of yourself mm. in the event of an accident. We say, exactly. hey, we need to do the same. There has yeah. to be parity. The people that come into mm. South Africa, whether you come through the ferns or you come through our borders through a visa, you have to make sure that you pay insurance to take care of yourself mm. in the event that there is an accident. We're not trying to be xenophobic because there are people who are saying, yeah, that's oh, you're trying to be, you, you're being xenophobic. We are entitled because we pay at the pump. Well, yeah. I pay at the pump too. And guess what? I also pay so that the children of the poor and the working class mm. can go to university through NFSS. Mm. I pay tax so that people with disability and, and, and the elderly people can receive payment at the end of the month and mm. we take care of them. But I am not entitled to NSFAS. My children are not entitled, right? Mm. I am not entitled to old age pension because yeah. I simply pay. So for those people who are saying that they're entitled because they've come in here and they pay at the pump for petrol, you're talking nons nonsense yeah. and sorry. I'm also not entitled to the things that I've, I've said. What kind of um, rights? does a claimant have with the RAF? So you, you, you have a range of rights. You, you, you have a right to as much information as possible. And by the way, that's why, that's why we're here. And that's why okay. we empower you. You have a right to a lawyer um, to assist you with the claim because not everybody is uh, you know, knowledgeable when it comes to the legislative uh, you know, words and the documentation yeah. and all the needs that you, all the things that you need to be able to claim. Mm. But we go further. We say the reason that we have strategic focus 2020 to 2025 mm -hmm. is to better improve so that you have access to the rights that we've spelled out that you have with the RAF. You have to write to claim for medical expenses. You have to write to, to claim for many, many things. But where we're sitting is to say, we are here to empower you mm. so that you exercise 
those right. rights. Perfect. I think that um, a lot of claimants, even, you know, active claimants don't know their rights. They don't know, for example, that they can check the status of their claim, whether they're represented or not. They have a right to know the progress of their claim. It's important. Mm. And what we've done with that, with the introduction of the CRM, our contact center, mm. is there was a black hole once you go to a lawyer and you claim. Mm. The lawyer didn't give you the information mm. to say your claim, you have now been um, offered. Yeah. Doesn't and offer. we have rejected an offer mm. or we have accept accepted an offer. What happened was you would know at a point where they say to you, okay, you're now at a point where we're giving you this mm. compensation. So with the CRM, you are now able to check mm. how far is my claim? Has mm. the offer been, uh, you know, extended by the RAF? Has my lawyer, you know, accepted the offer? Mm. Are we going to court or not? Mm. What has that done is mm. we have lawyers hopping mad saying, mm. but how did you know that, that information? Exactly. But it's important for us to empower the claimants. To know. It's their right to be empowered and to know all this information. Yeah, claimants out there, please, please uh, exercise your right to follow up on your claim. Don't just, you know, leave it up to your lawyer. They are there to provide that service for you, but you have a right to know exactly what is happening with your claim. So make sure that you contact the, the new contact center. We're going to dive into that a bit later, but exercise your right. You know, it is your claim. Also take some of that responsibility to make sure that the RAF is doing exactly what they promised to do. So earlier on, um, we spoke a bit about fraud. And I was like, I want to get into this fraud thing. And you spoke about how it happens internally and how it can happen externally. So I want to understand, um, you know, the type of fraud that the RAF has detected and how the fund has dealt with such fraud cases. So in the RAF, we have a dedicated department, uh, the forensics um, a department that um, deals with fraud. And that department, as well as the entirety of the RAF, works very well with law enforcement agencies such as the Hawks and the SIU and, um, and, and the NPA. The kind of fraud that has been detected is the one where it's perpetuated by your doctors, your lawyers, and the claimants themselves. I made an example earlier of people who fall off a roof while working on their houses, and then mm. they have an idea to say, I'm going to go and, uh, you know, and claim at the RAF. Or what happens is when they arrive at the doctors, if it's an unscrupulous doctor, the doctor will say, there's an opportunity, an opportunity for you to claim with the RAF, and then the doctors will make the documentation. Even doctors, yes. healers. Doctors yeah. make the documentation mm. so that it speaks to... Mm. A, a, an ankle injury or whatever injury. Oh. And then they go on to obviously, you know, um, involve a lawyer. Mm. And the lawyer is agreeable and the lawyer is the one that will take it to the RAF. And eventually, as a, a judge, a very respectable judge of the High Court mentioned last year, mm. the RAF has become a gravy, a gravy train yeah. for lawyers mm. who are defrauding the, the, the RAF, where mm. you find a judge having to read to say there was an ankle injury. And when they look deeper, mm. there's no ankle injury. There's just an abrasion. But because the RAF is a gravid gra train that people can come and defraud, mm. I mean, it happens all the time. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's the doctors, as you said, the people who are supposed to heal, and the lawyers, people who are supposed to uphold the law. Mm. They've realized that they can get very rich from the RAF, and they do. What has happened in the past two years is mm. that the RAF, working with our partners, have stopped fraud to the value of 2.6 billion. 2.6 wow. billion rand. Wow. That is the amount of fraud we have had to deal with. And, and, it's, continu insane. and it's continuous, mm. by the way. And it's an unfortunate part of what we're dealing with in that, like you said, Lawyers are supposed to uphold the law. The law. And the doctors are supposed to, to heal. heal. They're not mm. supposed to be involved in yeah. fraud. But that's the kind of nonsense that we, we, we deal with continuously. Uh, that's a, a very shocking number, you know. Um, you spoke about how lawyers and doctors are defrauding the fund. How, 
is this affecting claimants? How are, are lawyers defrauding claimants as well? All the time. It, wow. it, it happens all mm. the time. In two instances. Mm. One, you get a claimant who is expecting to get a, an X amount of money. Mm. And they get very little. For instance, we've just had a, a case going to court of a lawyer from Port Elizabeth who defrauded a widow who was supposed to get 500,000. Mm. And that widow was only awarded by the lawyer 80,000 rand. The next part mm. of the fraud happens when a um, survivor of a car accident claims from the RAF mm -hmm. and they get nothing, like zero. How does that happen? It happens that the lawyers and the people that were they work with, they just continue to string you along mm. to basically have you punch yourself out mm. to the point where you are completely exhausted. You know what's interesting about that? Um, you see or hear claimants disgruntled thinking that it's the fund that's delaying their payments, that's, you know, stringing them along. So this is enlightening to know that it's actually, you know, their own lawyers that are doing that in order to, you know, wear them out. They probably received their compensation long ago, is it not? Of course. So look, we, we could do better with our systems to make sure that, uh, you know, we give you your money or your, yeah. your, your compensation quicker. Mm. Because our aim, like I said earlier, is to be able to award you with, uh, mm. with the compensation mm. within 120 days. But what happens most, and if not all the time, mm. is that the longer the claim sits with us, remember, the lawyer will claim legal and administrative fee. So it's not in their interest to settle a claim as quickly as possible. Oh. And that's what we're trying to solve. Yeah. Our systems are not perfect. But most of the time what happens is it's not in the interest of the lawyers to have the claim settled within oh, 120 wow. days. And so what they do is they run the 120 days by not giving us the documents, all the documents, mm. to make sure that the claim goes as far so as possible to form. the point where mm. they can't continue mm. justifying claiming. Can I, as a claimant, for instance, check if all my documents have been submitted um, you know, and, and everything is on track? You couldn't do so mm. in the past. Oh, but okay. since we introduced the contact center, yeah. we're happy to tell you that you can now check at every step of your claim. Mm. You, then you knock at the lawyer's door to say, but I gave you all the documents. Yeah. What happens? The, the, mm. the RAF say they haven't received the full complements of the documents. Mm. So now you can do that. You okay. are empowered to do so. That is us giving you a platform to make sure that you are empowered to know where your claim is. If you're not happy, you can then go back to the lawyer and say, the RAF told me, what are you doing about it? And if my lawyer is giving me grief, what do I do about it as a claimant? Well, if the lawyer continu continues to, to give you grief, there's a platform that deals with the, um, with the lawyers, the LPC. Okay. The LPC is there for people to complain and to make sure that uh, you know your matter is taken. Mm. What it is is that is a, it's a, a self-regulative body mm. of lawyers mm. that makes sure that the lawyers are kept in check. Let's talk about what the RAF is doing as part of road safety awareness, especially during this back to school season, to help bring down these you know shocking statistics about uh, deaths. You're right. I mean, that's a, a shocking statistics. And um, the RAF has recognized that we have to introduce the people of South Africa to road safety when they are still very young. So what we are doing is we are in full swing with back to school. Uh, back to school involves having our teams, um, you know, getting involved in guiding the kids you know, to school through a mascot where the kids get excited about, mm. about road safety. We are doing, uh, for instance, a TV advert that mm. involves kids, that involves a school setting. You know, a kind of language that both the parents and the kids understand. Mm. We have influences with their kids getting fully involved in our education so that people can relate. I mean, mm. we had um, a a parent influencer um, Instagram advert 
mm. uh, social media advert mm. with Ntando Duma and the daughter. Mm. And people I, I saw absolutely it, yeah. loved it. And the kind of traction we received mm. spoke to people relating to yes. mother and daughter. And that's mm. the kind of work that we are doing. So our back to school is in full swing. We're excited about it. And we're excited that the people of South Africa are excited about the kind of work mm. that we're doing. We've gone further, I mean, to, you know, talk about the issue of overloaded school transport. Yeah. So that we remind, you know, the people of South Africa that there are a lot of kids that get hurt as a mm. result of I'm a victim overloaded. Of overloading. Yes. That you, I, we used to, you know, go to school in a, in a van. I don't know cars very well, but it's a van. It has like the canopy. And we used to sit at the back and they would literally squash us at the back like sardines, you know, and you like, you know, you're just hoping to make it to school. So I am definitely, I know all about overloading and I think it's important that mm. we, we make sure that, you know, especially transport drivers, it's wrong. Yes. It's we, need wrong. To, we need to teach Abu Maluma, mm. as you call yes. them, that it is wrong to try to make a quick buck at the expense of, of our children. young people. Our yes. young people are the future and we mm. need them to contribute to this society. And that's the kind of work that, uh, you know, that we're doing to remind, you know, people mm. how important the, the, the kids are. But as I said, it's important to teach them about road safety while they're still young, because mm. you must remember that the kids of today are the drivers and the of passengers tomorrow. of tomorrow. Mm. Definitely. What does the RAF of the future look like? What uh, new developments uh, is the RAF working on to achieve that? I'm, I'm excited about the RAF that we're, we're trying to build for the future. Like I said, we already have the, the CRMR contact center. Mm. We're going further. I mean, we're going into, you know, improving our, uh, you know, our integrated systems mm. by way of automation so mm. that we're not heaving files when, uh, you know, our, our, our claimants call. We have information directly in front of the screen and we empower them as quickly as possible. We at the CRM are able to call you back, by the way. You mm. can send us a please call me or you okay. can buzz us. Oh. And it's such that it's interactive, not like the contact center of old, where you could just call us and we don't call you back. With this one, we are able to call you back and we are able to mm. inter interact with you better. So it's a, mm. it's a user-friendly experience. But the future looks like an RAF that is mm. fully automated and that is better mm. in the way that it responds to our claimants. What uh, partnerships um, as part of the new RAF are you looking to you know, engage with more. Um, can we talk a bit about that? So the current partnerships that we have, I mean, we have our driver awareness bus. Our driver awareness bus goes to uh, you know, your, your, your bus depots, it goes to your, your trucking stops, it goes to the taxi ranks. What it does is, you know, what we don't realize is a lot of people who are driving on the road are actually driving blind. Those people get checked by an opt optometrist and let me tell you, 90% of those people that we check, mm. we have to give spectacles to. They suddenly realize, or maybe they have known and they've been scared to tell their bosses that they're blind because they think they're going to be fired. Mm. They've been driving blind. There's a lot of people with high cholesterol and, and high blood pressure. Mm. And it does contribute to road accidents. And then we have our, you know, our driver, our driver training initiative mm. where we go and we train young people who've just come out of school to be truck drivers. Oh, because wow. you know about the nonsense that happens all the time yeah. where the truck drivers, you know, they, 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 they blockade the roads mm. because they're complaining that too many of our drivers are foreigners. And so we've taken the initiative to say, okay, let us train local drivers. Mm. We've gone further than that. We're now getting involved in music festivals. Can you believe it? The RAF hey, getting to... I want to, to know more about where, that. Why are you going to the festivals? The festivals <laughs> where people drink and they yeah. bring alcohol. And so, then they forget themselves and then they yeah. maim and then kill themselves. And we've said, well, let's go to where these people are. So mm. that when they dance, um, you know, and enjoy themselves, we remind them. If you misbehave, you're going to end up not getting home. Yeah. You're going to maim yourself. You're going to kill yourself. Mm. That for us is important. It's, we have teamed up mm. with radio stations 
they have all these mu music festivals. Yeah. We've realized that this is an, another platform that we can piggyback on. You know, mm. we, we, we will have, for instance, in one of the music festivals that we're currently, you know, uh, planning yeah. for the near future, we will have banners on the stage saying, do you have a designated driver, mm. you know, reminding you that, you know, just a small mistake that you make can end up with you not being able to mm. witness your daughter finishing matric, mm. your son getting married. That, and, that's what I wanted to say. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you there. That it's, it's, it's giving me the sense that um, you, you are putting it in the back of their minds while they're there that, hey, I know you're having a good time, but make sure that you get home safely. You don't have to drive yourself back home, you know, get a, get a designated driver, call an Uber, you know, make another plan. You do not have to, you know, potentially risk your life or your friend's life. So I like that. I like that we're meeting people where they are. We're not just talking at them. You know, we're interacting with them in places where they, they, they're most open and carefree and they will want to learn. They will want to know more. And trust me, it will stick with them that actually, I, yeah, maybe let me not drive tonight. After no, no, this, it's important. You know, after yeah. this event. Let me, let me choose something else. It's, it's important for us that we save as many young people as possible. Yeah. Because our young yes. people from the age of, say, 15 to 35, Mm. are the ones that get most involved in mm. road accidents. Mm. And we want to save our young people because these are still people who are active in the economy who contribute mm. a lot to this country, to the well-being mm. of this country. And it's important for us to be where they are, mm. to remind them. You do not have to, you know, injure mm. yourself. You don't have to kill yourself. It's a simple decision of calling a friend to drive you home, calling an mm. Uber or calling a taxi. I'm really interested to see the impact of these partnerships because all of them have such an integral and, you know, important role to play in, you know, terms of road safety, in terms of caring about people, you know, who use the road. So it's very exciting to see what's coming up for the fund. So you've been talking about this call center, you know, the whole way through and this new and improved CRM system. How do people reach them? How do people reach you guys? It's simple. You can call us on 087-820-1111. 087-820-1111. It's as simple as that. And I did say that you can buzz us, by the way. Yes. You can say, send us a please call me. Yes. We will call you back and find out why you need to talk to us. It's very important. I mean, if you've missed anything from this conversation and you want to know more, or if you realize, actually, I have a right to know what exactly is happening with my claim right now, don't forget to call 087-820-1111. You see, I got it the first time because I'm smart. Talking about partnerships, I want to know more about some of your corporate social responsibility that the RAF is doing. Yeah, sure. So what we did was in 2023, towards the end of the 20, 2023, we handed over, uh, you know, a section of the Masakane Clinic in Alexandra that we had improved. So what happened was that on Mandela Day, our CEO, Collins Letzwalo, went to Alexandra, to the Masakane Clinic, and witnessed the shocking state of the facility and undertook to improve the sections of the facility. And that's what we handed over. Not only that, we also, in uh, the Eastern Cape, we also improved one of the facilities there. And it's important for us mm. from a, a CSR perspective to do that. When it comes to um, education, during the metric results, what we do is we award bursaries to, um, you know, uh, learners with, mm. uh, with disability. And those are the kind of partnerships that are very, very important to mm. us to not only be known for claims and road safety. Yes. We want to play more you know, of a role in mm, society where we assist role. our society mm. in improving their conditions. Yeah. I would like a message from you, McIntosh, to all South Africans out there um, about road safety. What do you have to tell them? Look, uh, the, the message is simple uh, for us. If you follow the rules of the road and if you behave yourself on the road, you never have to call us. Mm. Because when you call us, it's when you've had a life-changing accident. Just follow the rules of the road 
and you never have mm. to interact with us. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. Thank you so much, Macintosh. It, it's been a very enlightening session. Um, I've learned a lot and I hope that whoever's listening or watching this has also learned a lot about the RAF. And I look forward to interacting more with the people of the fund and really learning the intricacies of how the road accident fund works. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much for, uh, for the platform. And by the way, do not forget to follow us on social media. Yes. Yes, the information is being shown to you on the screen right now. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Well, that's it, folks. Thank you for watching the first episode of the RAF podcast. Make sure you follow us on all our social media platforms and stay tuned for the next episode. We're looking forward to keeping you informed about all things RAF. Thanks for watching. Road Accident Fund. I care.